Hey guys, my name is Nerby, also known as Nursey, and about a month from me recording this video, I made a video talking about my ban from RGL. Uh, and in that video, there's been a pretty big criticism where it appears I am deflecting blame, not taking accountability, uh, downplaying my actions, and things of that nature, which is something I can wholeheartedly agree with, and I can see how. Uh, it's perfectly understandable how that came off. Uh, so the point of this video is to focus on the things I've done to take accountability, what I've done to grow as a person over the course of the almost four years since I've been banned, and just focusing on an apology itself because there wasn't an apology in the video. I did have a segment at the end of the video where I made an apology, but that was the main focus of it. And for people who aren't aware of the things I posted on my Twitter uh, on this channel earlier, or the things I said on Twitch, they very rightly so don't know the things I've said about that. So I think it's nice to give you to make a video solely focus on that. Uh, and before I continue with everything, I do want to let people know that I am not using a script. Uh, I am very prone to rambling. And while I do have bullet points to help stop me from rambling, uh, it's going to have to be a completely different vibe from RGL. So you're probably going to hear me stutter. I may uh, go on little tangents and things of that nature. I won't try to be uh, irrelevant here. I'll try to keep everything on the same topic here, but do apologize for that. But there's a reason why I'm doing that, and that is because I believe that using a script comes up as very disingenuous, uh, non sincere, which I think is not good when you're trying to make an emphasis on being apologetic. I think it's always better to come straight from your heart. And I'm also someone who believes that uh, actions speak louder than words, which also leads into how I try to show I'm sorry to somebody. Uh, so for people who aren't aware of the broken play analogy, very popular thing online, but the way it works is that, let's say you have a plate and you drop it and this plate shatters, right? Uh, now, it doesn't matter what your intentions were. It doesn't matter how sorry you are. You can be apologetic every minute of the day. That doesn't change the reality that you broke the plate. This plate is broken at the end of the day. Uh, and there's nothing that can be done about that plate unless you actually decide to do something about it. And that relates a lot to how I view my situation. So not only do I think me saying sorry isn't the best way to handle the situation, but also is a good way how to represent my situation. And let me explain how. So the way I view my actions comparable to that plate analogy is that it doesn't matter what my intentions were. I think I've done a good job in the video showing that my intentions were not to be a predator or to be creepy, but it was still predatory and creepy. The actions were very pedophilic. Uh, the actions were still very dangerous and still caused real harm. That's something I understood for a long time now, and that's something I didn't put emphasis on at all in my video. Uh, the goal of the video was simply to show my side of the story because uh, from what I've heard is that a lot of people seem to think that I did what I did intentionally. I was trying to harp somebody and I think the intention does matter a lot, especially when you're trying to take into account for a level of punishment someone should receive, which is also why I put the black and white argument with RGL there, how things like this should never be viewed black and white. Uh, what I did not convey well in the video at all is that I still done bad things. Things Bad things still happen whether I wanted them to happen or not. Uh, again, I think I did a good job showing that they weren't my intentions. It was an actual a mistake on my part. But I also know that this mistake was very dangerous and very predatory. Uh, so even in the same video, I made efforts to show that I tried to prove from mistakes before I was even banned from RGL. But the short end of it is that that mistake happens one time, that's one time too many. And something I don't ever like doing is uh, talk about my problems and use that as an excuse for things I may have caused in the past. I absolutely hate people doing that. I always view that as making excuses for yourself. But I am going to explain uh, myself. I'm going to get a bit more personal about myself here. Uh, just so people can better understand the mindset I was in. So please keep in mind, I'm going to be talking about the problems I faced in the past oh, real quick here. But keep in mind, this is not me making an excuse. I just want people to understand what my mindset was and what I've done to fix this mindset. Uh, so my mindset when I was younger was that I was groomed very heavily online myself. Uh, pretty much when I started using the internet around the age of 12, when I was uh, terminally online, uh, I was used very sexually online, and then when I was playing uh, Team Fortress 2, I got into the mindset of that people only valued me for two things. People only valued me for being a good medic, and people only valued me for sex. Uh, I did not view uh, any software for me beyond those two subject matters. And honestly, this led me down a really bad path. 
Uh, that mindset eventually took that way for essentially my entire teenage years. Uh, I became extremely desensitized to the topic of sex. I made a lot of inappropriate jokes everywhere I went. That was just a huge core part of my personality. And I do want to say there is nothing wrong with being a sexual person, I believe, as long as you're doing it responsibly. Uh, very, very, very obvious people just make it clear. Responsibly meaning you do it between consenting adults. Uh, you make sure you're not doing it in public like I have been. You pretty much just got to be careful with it. I, again, I don't think there's anything wrong with being sexual online. Uh, the way I'm going to talk about later is going to sound like I think it's extremely wrong to be that way. There's nothing wrong with uh, engaging in that sort of activity as long as you're responsible about it. But with that being said, uh, I had a huge problem with it. I was very desensitized of it, and I made a lot of inappropriate, uh, really inappropriate jokes in public. If you watched my stream, uh, I was making a lot of sex-based jokes. And over time, that was something I became less proud of as I was venturing out more in the real world. I need people to keep in mind, there was a point in time in my life where I didn't leave my house for two years straight, literally. I, was, uh, I wasn't actually agoraphobic, but I was borderline agoraphobic. I was unable, literally unable to leave my house, and that really stunted my growth of social awareness. Uh, and again, this is not me making an excuse for these things happening, because at the end of the day, I genuinely believe that everyone has their own cross to bear. And that was my that was my burden that I had to deal with, and unfortunately, I simply wasn't good enough. And that also leads why it took me so long to make that video, and why I'm making this video today is well, why did I take so long? Regarding the RGL video, a majority of the stuff posted in that video is stuff that's been well known. Not even a month after I was banned, I could have made a majority of that video years ago, but I didn't. Uh, I could have uh, I could have came out and apologized years ago because I already knew the consequence of my actions before I was even banned, but I didn't. And regarding what I said earlier about actions speaking louder than words, uh, that's because I quite frankly did not feel good enough to come out and say, "All right, guys, here I'm sorry. Uh, hopefully you believe me." I don't think that was right. Uh, the things that I've done wrong are not something that I think can be fixed overnight i had um while it's really easy just to be careful online regarding sex stuff uh the issues i have lie deeper than that uh i was negligent because i was desensitized to such a very sensitive topic and so i needed to to relearn uh, the importance of that subject i needed to understand that i have more about that as a person i just pretty much need to grow from it so to do that, I had to take a, I had to do a lot of things. And when we tell you about the things I've done to improve on myself as a person from that, uh, I went to a lot of therapy and I got on medication for uh, my mental health issues. I don't have anything extreme. I have some pretty uh, generic anxiety issues, stuff like that. But unfortunately, it's something, uh, well, as uh, was as impeding as that, can have an impact on my ability to think right. And so very fortunately, medication I took has helped me out immensely, which is why it's so much easier for me to think my conversations through before I just start talking. I'm sure anyone who saw me grow over the course of the last few years online realized that I do a lot less rambling. And when I make jokes online, it's a lot easier to understand that what I said was a joke. Uh, that's all part of me being able to think more clearly now that I have medication for something that was pretty much stunting my mental health. Uh, next thing I did was uh, I did study a good bit of psychology. Not something I went to school for, but I felt like it was important for me to study it as a hobby when I had the chance so I could better understand people. Uh, I did go through a lot of therapy when I was very young, and something that I was diagnosed pretty early with was that I had a very hard time understanding other people's emotions. Uh, and that was because I understood it, but I didn't know how to act according to it. I knew when people were sad. I knew when people were getting upset, mad, angry, happy, stuff like that. I understand those motions and other people extremely well, but I did not know how to respond accordingly. I would only respond from, uh, from how I felt. I did not very adjust pretty much to how other people are. And that was something that required a lot of help for me to get past too. Unfortunately, that was something that affected my, uh, TF2 career very much. And when studying through psychology, I understand what appropriate responses are. I understand a lot easier when people are being uncomfortable, uh, what I say and how it can affect other people and things like that. Uh, studying psychology even as a hobby helped me understand that, yeah, the consequences of the words I say are very real. And it also helped me understand better, again, how to prevent that from happening. 
And another big thing I focused on was simply just going outside more. Uh, I have a job I'm pretty happy with now that involves me engaging with a fair amount of people. And through these engagements and being public and things like that, I have grown a lot as a person. Uh, I know how to talk to people easier. I know how to slow down my speech to convey myself easier. And while I do have a speech impediment, which I'm sure people can hear coming out right now as I'm not leading from a script, uh, it's improved uh, much by me simply slowing down and, you know, and, and essentially enunciating my words. Sorry, <laughs> there's that stutter. But while those things are more personal and probably don't sound like they have an effect, uh, pretty much all three of those things can come together and help me understand my flaws as a person. And something I forgot to mention during therapy is that there was a lot of focus on my value as a person. Again, I did not value myself outside of sex and being a good TF2 medic. Uh, I knew there was more to life than those two things, but I just couldn't seem to get out of my shell and appreciate those things. And therapy helped me out a lot with that. And so was going outside and talking to my friends and seeing what other people valued in me. Uh, so my friends really liked hanging out with me and they helped me grow from those errors I have. I would constantly beat myself up uh, over my TF2 ban and before that over the most seemingly random things. And I'm very fortunate I have friends who knew how to pick me up and help me learn a lot, a lot more about myself. I'm a lot more than just sex and being a TF2 medic, which I think is something I want people to really learn from me. Uh, whether I ever get unbanned or not, whether I'm a level out of play or not, or things like that, I think is ultimately irrelevant. I think a very important thing is for people who are in my, uh, in my uh, shoes. Uh, so anyone who's probably in my shoes where they're playing TF2 and they have an issue regarding sex or TF2 players being a bit over sexual, things like that. And this isn't a TF2 issue. This is something that happens quite commonly, like not even just in the world of esports, just in the world, period. It's very, very easy to trick yourself into thinking that sex is really the only thing you can bring to the table for most people because it's a very easy way to appeal to people. But the thing is, is that everyone's a lot more than that. Uh, you are a lot more than that. I have plenty of friends who are in the same trap that I was where sex was really all they had to bring or that's what they thought they had to bring. They weren't aware that they were funny. They were fun to talk to. Some are really good at games and have a lot to teach people. They do have a lot more than just of sex. I can appeal to the sex to people. There's a lot more value in you than that. And that's the thing I wish I understood when I was younger. And I would have avoided the whole travesty of being desensitized to it and not only hurting other people, but also hurting myself by stunting my growth as a person by only believing I had such a little value to people regarding only those two things. You're always a lot more than that. And if you don't think you're a lot more than that, you can always work hard to be better than that, which is what I spent the last four years doing. And again, regarding actions speak louder than words, I hope people understand that part. I didn't just sit here for three years and then suddenly decided I wanted to come back. As I mentioned earlier, through the therapy and studying and going outside, essentially, uh, during the last few years, I made a lot of efforts to grow myself as a person, which is why I am able to sit here now and talk to people. It's because I feel a lot better as a person, a lot more confident. I feel like I've grown a lot as a person. Uh, you can see in the RGL stuff that I have spoke to Della quite a few times. Uh, and Della, while I understandably did hurt Della with my actions, Della and I have been okay with each other for quite some time now. It's like that for a lot of people that I've hurt. We've grown past that and a lot of people are understanding that I've made genuine efforts to improve myself. I did not feel comfortable just coming back a month later, even a year later. I wanted a chance to genuinely be able to grow. And while you can look at my Twitter and see that I have made many tangents that I've been banned, as we can see over the course of that at least the last two years, those hands super toned down since I've seeked help to grow myself as a person. And I really hope that's enough for people to understand that I am not the same person I was when I was banned, or at least when I caused actual harm to people. Now, again, I don't want that to be an excuse. Punishment was deserved. And part of the way I accepted punishment was through the harassment that I received. Uh, the harassment that I got with my face being photoshopped in dead bodies, being called slurs, having reputable TF2 players just come in and just attack me and have people validate them by saying, oh yeah, you're attacking a pedophile, so it's okay whatever you do to them. Uh, I always assumed that was just part of the punishment. That's how I took it. I'm like, okay, well, it's going to piss me off and make me upset, but I'll get used to it one day. I'll just deal with the punches as they come. And I just accept that as part of the punishment. 
And same thing with the TF2 ban itself. I don't think I should be let off scot-free. Far from it. I have told people plenty of times that the punishment was warranted for me. Again, my argument was just that I think my punishment shouldn't be the same as some people who, uh, what is it? Not the same. It's the wrong way to put it. It's just that I feel like my punishment was worse than people who've done some very, very evil things. But again, the way I worded it made it sound like I didn't deserve punishment, like people shouldn't care about what I did. No, people should always care what I did, and I was rightly called out. Uh, it was pretty foolish for me to think that I could improve on myself, and hopefully people let me, you know, get on by. That was extremely foolish. And something I need people to understand, too, is that I pointed out in the video, but there seems to be this consensus that I hide who I am. On other places, uh, no, that's not true. Uh, you could ask, like, for example, a lot of people think I hide my identity from Smash Brothers because I do use a different moniker as I play Smash Brothers. Uh, I've only done that just so people wouldn't harass people, but just when they just Google Nerby and see I'm still active and stuff. Uh, but I do inform my TOs in my local scene of who I am and what I've done that uh, I'm not going to put it on here. I, mean, I do have a screenshot from my TO saying, like, I talked about it a bit too much and wish I would shut up about how much I talked about myself. Uh, but things like that. Is, so there's a general consensus that I'm just hiding who I am, which I think is very untrue. And I think I've proven more than enough that I stream on my main Twitch account, like, plenty. Uh, I have the people I, I pug with, for example, I play pickup games with, I have added on my account. I won't hide who I am. I feel like me trying to run and hide who I am wholeheartedly like that. Like, it'd be super easy for me to ditch trying to be involved with TF2, completely change my name, and not be found again. Just go on with my life. That'd be extremely easy to do. But I don't want to do that. I feel like that's me trying to avoid every problem I faced in the last few years, and that's not something I'm comfortable with doing. I genuinely grew from the problems that I faced, and I want people to be able to see that, and I hope it's good enough for them. And if it's not good enough for them, I'm just going to keep growing. I'm just going to keep getting better. That's the best I can do at the end of the day. And the only thing I can hope for is that it's good enough for some people. If not, well, hopefully one day I will be good enough. I'm going to keep working hard towards being good enough for people. Uh, now, as I said, I do sorry, apologize if things are a little out of order. But hopefully you can see I'm talking with my heart on my sleeve here. I'm trying to be as genuine as possible. I have made a lot of efforts. I personally think I made way more efforts than most people in my position would ever do to try to improve their situation. So as I said, if it's not good enough for you, then hey, I hopefully one day it will be good enough for you. Uh, if not, then, you know, I understand. I do understand. I know not everyone's going to be happy with me ever. Even if somehow I got unbanned, uh, not everyone's ever going to be happy with me. Some people will be really upset. Some people are still going to want me dead, attack me, etc. And that's just the way it is. That's just something I accepted at this point. Uh, and as far as the actual apology goes, I apologize multiple times, and I will keep apologizing multiple times. My actions were hideous. They were horrendous. They were despicable. Despicable, sorry. And, again, that's a big reason why I focus hard on improving myself. I never want to cause that level of harm again. Again, my intentions, I think, were pretty obviously not to be a pedophile or to groom people or to hurt anybody. But, unfortunately, that was what my actions were. They were disgusting. And I want to improve from those actions. And I hopefully, well, I believe I am good enough. I haven't made a mistake like that for years. Uh, again, since the one we showed in the video. And... Hopefully, again, it's good enough, but if it's not good enough, I'm still always going to be improving on myself. Trying to make myself better is always going to be a goal of mine, no matter what. And I am genuinely sorry. I am genuinely sorry to the people that I've hurt. I've hurt a lot more people than just the people who made a call post against me. While it's the situations where people are underage were not common at all, I did break a lot of hearts, essentially. Uh, I did hurt a lot of feelings. Uh, I was a very bad partner to a lot of people. I wasn't abusive for smacking people around, but uh, emotionally abusive, I definitely was. I definitely hurt a lot of people in that regard, and I approved a lot in that. I've been, uh, I have been—I no longer have short-term relationships. The current relationship I have now has been going on for two years, and I do actually physically live with my, my current partner. And uh, hopefully that shows my ability to try to grow, how much I'm focused myself to not make the same mistakes. I'm a much more responsible person now and a much more responsible partner. And I hopefully how much better I'm taking care of people involved now shows to the people I've hurt before that I do regret how I was and I don't want to be that way uh, anymore. And to the people like Della who are hurt for me or Dazil that were hurt by me, yeah, I am sorry. Uh, I was in the same boat as you guys at some point. I was put into a world that I was not ready yet for. I should never have been involved in. And it fucked me up. 
it generally did fuck me up. And I generally wish I could understand that sooner. And I wish I owned up to it sooner. It took me so long for me to come out and be like, yeah, you know, I'm sorry that it turned out this way. You guys were introduced to a world that you shouldn't have been introduced to. And I made it a lot worse. I really wish it wasn't that way. But hopefully you see who I am now. And I'm doing actively everything I can to prevent that from happening to anybody else. And then their group I want to apologize to is the TF2 community itself. Uh, I never really understood my role in TF2. I never took my position as an invite player very seriously. I was very proud of me being a top level TF2 medic. I was extremely proud of that. And I'm still proud of that to this day. But I didn't understand that people actually looked up to me. I never understood that I pretty much had fans. I never understood I had a position of power over other people because of me being a high level TF2 player. I never understood that. And I regret that insanely because, especially in hindsight, when I'm rereading chat logs, to, I realized, oh my God, dude, these <laughs> these people only talked to me because I was on Freya Tech. Like, oh my God, how could I be so blind to it? I never valued my spot as a TF2 player, and I really wish I understood what it meant because it meant a lot to other people, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But me not understanding my spot, intentionally not, ended up me having power over people that I didn't even know I had in the first place. And with those people that looked up to me, look what happened. I bet there's a lot of people who are, uh, was it, who are transgender who looked up to me as a role model and are disgusted. And now I made I'm a major blowback to them trying to get further in the community. Um, same thing with furries. Uh, I used to goat that I was the highest level TF2 furry, and look what I've done. I just made everything worse. Quite recently, there was a thread on TF2 saying if you're a furry or trans, you are a pedophile. You shouldn't be allowed to game. And while that thread was quickly taken down by TFTV, it had quite a few upvotes. <laughs> or upfrag, sorry. Uh, and that means people agree with it. <laughs> before it got taken down. So that tells me, yeah, what I was accused of and what I've done definitely did not help with making anything better in TF2. And so I generally hope people see my situation, understand that uh, I had to be more responsible, the importance of being responsible, the damage not being responsible uh, responsible can cause, and understand themselves a bit more personally. A conversation I have almost every day with people, I realize I used to have this almost every day, I was talking to people about how to improve from being a sex-based person. And as I, get, as I said, there's nothing wrong with being sexual online. If you're a very flirty person and that's how you have fun, there's groups of people who do stuff like that, that do it responsibly. They're just pretty much you just gotta be responsible if you're gonna be in that type of thing. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But if you don't value yourself or you're hurting yourself because that's all you think you bring to the table, obviously there's a problem, but keep in mind, like. I know I'm not looking like a million bucks here, but you know, it gets better. I am a lot more satisfied with my life now than I ever have been. And my dream is to be able to share that. Whoops. My dream is to be able to share that with people uh, from a community I love. And if I can't, then the only thing I can do, as I said, is do the best I can. So for people who aren't even in my boat where people are attacking them and thrashing at them, you have a lot of chance to grow and still make better out of your life. I'm very happy with my life, and I'm doing a lot of shit, at least online. Personally, no, but online, yes, I'm doing a lot of shit. And for you, who who probably is in the same mental boat, but hasn't done the mistakes I've made, you have so much room to grow with, and you have a lot of chance. You could make it way farther than I've ever had. So hopefully you can understand that. But this is me, again, trying to be sorry, and try to show that I've made a lot of efforts to focus on not making my mistakes again. And I want people to understand that a big reason why people didn't think I was apologetic is because I pulled my punches talking about myself, but I didn't pull my punches when talking about other people. And my actions were predatory, disgusting, and very easy to understand as being pedophilic. Again, I'm not either of those things, but my actions were that of someone, so I might as well have been in that moment. That's what my con the consequences of my actions were of someone who would do stuff like that, which attentions are not, it was disgusting on my part. I think I've done everything I could so far to keep, to get better from that. And I'm going to keep trying. So I want to listen to this apology. And I hope it makes you satisfied. I hope there's a much better understanding between me and the people who didn't think I was taking enough accountability and hope you can understand that I have made a lot of efforts to not make those mistakes again. <laughs> So again, I do apologize. I'm going to keep growing. I'm going to keep focusing on being better, uh, making myself a happier person and making the people around me better. And again, if it's not good enough for you just yet, then the only thing I hope for is one day I'll be good enough. But I do thank everyone for their time and hopefully we'll talk again later.